Hello, this is the help video for Exchange 2007 Database Backups and Restores. In a previous video, we created this Exchange 07 data client, uh, and so now we're just going to go ahead and run the backup. We'll start by just a simple manual backup, and we'll let that run. Now, if your database is very large, you might expect this to take several hours, uh, but in my case, for this example, I know the database is very small, so it should be completed. And there's my backup. Okay, so if we browse into that, we'll see our, our exchange uh, folder here. I didn't really mean to get the VSS stuff, so we're just going to ignore that for right now. Um, but we'll talk about VSS backups in other videos. But if I drill down under Exchange, we see the ESE backup. That's the Exchange uh, the database level backup. And here we have the first storage group, which contains our mailbox database and our logs. So to restore those, we just need to click both of those. What happens is we restore the database and then replay uh, the logs on top of that uh, to bring it all back up uh, to whatever the latest version was at the time of the backup. Now, if I just clicked on Restore right now, I would actually expect this Restore to fail. Uh, the reason for that is because the database isn't ready for us. Uh, if I don't make any changes in, in the Exchange Management Console or via PowerShell, then the Restore will attempt to overwrite the live or the current or the active database. And I don't really want that to happen. So what we're going to do is bring up the Exchange Managed Console. Uh, you can see right here, here's my, my database, and right now it's mounted. Uh, as I mentioned just a second ago, if I did want to overwrite my current or my live database, I would need to come in here and dismount uh, this database. I would also have to change a properties option. Uh, that would allow this database to be overwritten by the restore. So if I wanted to wipe out my live one and overwrite it with my from my backup, this is how you do it. But since that's not what I'm going to do for this video, I'm just going to cancel out of that. To create our recovery storage group, you go to your toolbox and then click right click on uh, database recovery management and open the tool. That should open up this new window. You may have to fill out, uh, if you've never been here before or never used this tool before, the Exchange Troubleshooting Assistant, <coughs> you may have to fill out uh, a little bit other information and then get to this welcome screen. But uh, since I, or I can just come right in here and create, uh, define this label. I'll go ahead and click on Next. And right here you'll see the, this option to create the recovery storage group. So we'll go ahead and just follow through the little wizard here. We'll just leave it all the default settings. If your database was very large and you needed to restore to an alternate location, you could enter in uh, different paths in here. Um, for example, maybe a D drive or an E drive or whatever. And the one thing that uh, I believe is not supported would be a network. Uh, path or network share, um, but it might be worth trying. Uh, I'm just not sure about that. Uh, once you've got your paths entered, go ahead and just click on Create the Recovery Storage Group. And you'll shortly get this message saying that the database, and it will list out whatever the name of your database is, has been added to the recovery storage group. Uh, so that's all we need. If I scroll down a little bit here, I should see this go back to Task Center. Uh, so that's it. We know that there is a recovery storage group because it's now giving us the option to remove it. So I'm going to go back to my uh, web browser and we'll go ahead and actually just run this restore. I believe that restore should be fairly quick since the database is very small and there's not much in it. 
So I'll refresh, and we'll see if it's done. Yep, so there's our job. I'll point out something here, just looking at the logs. The way our database restore works is we restore the database file and the logs back to a, a temporary location uh, or a uh, uh, kind of a staging directory. And then we tell Exchange, here's your data, go ahead and now pull that into the recovery storage group. So Exchange really does most of the work. We just trigger Exchange and, and tell it where to look for the data. Well, let's go now look at the Exchange Management Console again, or rather, sorry, the Troubleshooting Assistant, and we can should be able to look at our database. So we have to mount our database. We'll come in here and just check this box, and oh, nope, it actually already did that for us. There was just a little delay. These databases are mounted. So now we can go back to the Task Center. should then be able to merge. Yeah, there we go. It shows as mounted. Uh, if I go to the merge or gather merge information, we can kind of follow along. So here's the mailbox that is in this in, in this example, this is the only mailbox, but if you had you know, 50 or 100 mailboxes, they would all be in this list. You can actually, using the, uh, the copy or the merge tools here, you can restore an entire mailbox to a different mailbox or back to its original location. Uh, so there's all kinds of excellent tools that Microsoft, uh, the, the troubleshooting assistant here, provides for you. The a database level backup and restore to recovery storage group and thanks